Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bish's RV with some long overdue update footage on f footage. <laughs> That's going to be an indicator how this is going to go, well, I bet your money. Anyway, footage of the Cougar 364. This is an unconventional model that really serves some conventional... Per no. This is an unconventional model that really serves some... Uh, uh, it's an unconventional model that really serves some, some convection... It's an unconventional model that really serves some unconventional purposes really well. Nailed it. First try. What I mean by that? Um, it's not just another bunkhouse. It's a true two-bedroom RV. That's what really helps separate and define this one. Um, it has a like a, a queen bed down below in the rear room with like a giant loft bed above. So this can work you can certainly use it as a bunkhouse. It has a half bath en suite basically built off that rear room, so it's a bath and half model, which rocks your socks. The other thing is here though, this with that private rear second bedroom can literally function as a mother-in-law suite, father-in-law suite, or let's say uh, you're a, uh, a, a non-conventional household that has like an adult child, maybe with some special needs or something like that living with you. This is a model that can work for more than just tiny little kids. It can do so many different things. And actually, I think that rear bed in the bottom could frankly be fairly easily removed and have this converted into a heck of a mobile office. I think that is a serious potential option for a floor plan like this. Now, it's got a couple just like that, like just outstanding quality. It's like a killer weather package. And like the, the really smart double power awning on this, a factory solar package, all kinds of crazy good stuff. It's got a couple hiccups and I'll offer one of those right away here for you. It has no accommodations for a washer dryer from the factory. It's one of the very few big cat cougars that doesn't. However, as a result of that, this is also one of the more CPAP friendly bedrooms that you're going to find in their lineup. So it's, like I said, it's unconventional. It's not for everybody. And if this is your first time seeing this, chime in. I'd love to hear what you think about this. And if you're a returning viewer or if you're an owner of one of these, leave us some feedback about how you've used one and what you think about it. And let basically let everybody, you know, reach over and cheat off your test. <laughs> Now to help you get your bearings, we're standing on the stairs like you're coming downstairs in the morning. You see that big rain sensor and kind of XL vent fan right there. Um, it uh, you know allows you to get some great airflow, exhaust a lot of cooking heat if you need. One of the things though, I'll tell you the good with the bad, this has a huge junk windows over here in that super slide. They're looking at the neighbor's campsite though, not yours. This floor plan has a distinct lack of campsite windows. And unfortunately, you can't just flip flop the living room because the super slide would overlap with this door. The entry door is weirdly the reason you don't have as many windows over here um, on so many floor plans. You know, it's just funny way, the way that that works out. Now, um, I would like your input on something. Historically, I have really shunned the use of wide angle camera lenses, except where absolutely necessary. I've had a lot of people weirdly recently here saying, Josh, you should really get a wide angle lens. So I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment in this RV. I'm going to do a little A, B, jumping back and forth, wide angle, standard angle kind of stuff. Um, you tell me if you like the split view, if you like the both view, if it's okay, if I'm making a big deal over nothing. Um, I just, what I don't want to do is feel like I've misrepresented something to you. I want you to have like a very real world idea of what you're looking at on one of these. Um, don't get me wrong. I like being able to show you like a huge room like that, but I also want you to get to see what it really, really looks like over here. We'll come back and look at all the storage, uh, opened up in just a minute. First, just kind of, you know, from the, let me actually, you know what? Let me take a seat at the theater seat over here. I'm going to put you in the driver's seat. Here's your point of view. Um, unless you're a fish and then you have the fish eye point of view. <laughs> Now, I've got some exciting news on that entry door. Wait till we get to the uh, the half bath back here. I think you're going to like what I have to tell you. But, um, you know, for the most part, what's kind of cool about this one, the campsite cook, they don't get left out. They're still kind of in the middle of everything here. And directly across from us, we have a big 4K Jumbotron on this thing right here. Um, <laughs> you... 
you're you're just you're right on top of the thing. Now it's also on a swing arm mount, so it's a, a it's really a no neck wrecker view of things. But it faces organically the slide out in the seating. I think very nicely. And there's an accent light above that thing. I always flip and forget to turn on. I'm an idiot. Anyway, electric space heat and Tootsie toaster down there. Same 5,000 BTU heat rating on that, by the way. Um, a lot of times when people see a big wide one, they think it's a bigger, more powerful furnace. And no, that is not the case. Um, crap. Did I talk about the fact that's an optional seat? I can't remember what I've said or not. I know I meant to. Anyway, if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. We're looking at the optional table and chairs, and it's a no knee knocker. You see how those chairs are pushed right together down there? There's nothing blocking your legs. Um, a booth dinette is the standard setup in here, though. Similarly, I think for that uh, excellent entertainment center, you're going to like a theater seat. Um, the uh, For me, personally, because this RV, as you're going to see in that rear room, already has uh, enough sleeping. I don't know that it necessarily needs more, but let's get you back there, because I think that's really the like one of the biggest business rooms in the RV, <laughs> other than the bathroom. <laughs> All right, so once again, we're in the rear room here, just trying to help you get your bearings a little bit. And this is, to me, the, the big defining quality on this floor plan. The fact that it's a not a bunkhouse. The fact that it's a true two-bedroom. Now, for clarity, that is a Camp Queen mattress down there. That is a 60 by 74 mattress. So, <coughs> holy cow, I'm literally choking on words <laughs> anyway that's a camp queen bed now up top here uh i haven't measured that out but it's huge adult sized and it's 800 pound rated as that handy little sticker right there says um you also see this like step ladder right here now if you're looking at it, you're going dude there's no way you can climb that with your toes hang on just a second we'll get there i've got it out of the way because one of the cool things with cougar on this floor plan is they allow us to get that thing totally out of the way which i think is awful kind of nice uh it's the uh you know the move ladder get out the way now once again let me know if the the a b look at things is useful for you if it's just repetitive? I I don't know. I'm just trying to fulfill your request and let you guide the channel here. So like I said, using that ladder is absolutely not a problem. And what I like about this with those handrails, you have something nice to grab onto. And because this is a full height, uh, with the rear loft, they can't taper the rear roof down. That means that it's like you're not like pinched in a weird way to try to get yourself in and out of that upper loft. You slide your legs over, you swing your legs over, you're good to go. Also, over here, this is one of the other things that's really cool about this one to me. Um, a traditional plain Jane bunkhouse usually really sucks in terms of storage. And that ain't the case here. Because like I said, I feel this model more than most others is very well suited for it if you have a, like an adult with you whether it's you know mom or dad lives with you or goes camping with you or you have an adult child or maybe let's just say you have something like uh maybe an autistic child who is very sound sensitive it's very nice i think for them to be able to have their own private little quiet space back here and full storage below the bed is fantastic awesome space back here for like some you know, big chairs or something like that, a folding patio picnic table. What's also kind of cool about that, if you wanted to pull that bed out of there and convert this into an office, ooh, this is a this would be an absolutely fantastic office model. By the way, through the whole RV, you've got the blackout roller shades here, which I think is really awful nice. Now, I said I was really excited to tell you about the updates to the windows and the entry door. Well, guys, gals, Hot Pockets, however you identify, Cougar is listening. Because in years past, I would look at something like this and say, I'm not sure when I'm sitting on the toilet, I'm really cool with like having just, I just feel very exposed with a big old window out here. Like, you know, if it's just me camping alone, if I'm next to a tree, I, I don't care if I flash a squirrel. I do care if I inadvertently expose myself to the neighbor's daughter or something like that. I don't, that, that's not my goal. Well, um, you know, some privacy is nice here, but previously they were only thin shade prepped. Now, in point of fact, that's all we're looking at here is a window that is shade prepped. However, Cougar's brand manager has told me, I'm really tired of hearing you and your uh, your viewers ask about the shade that's not here. 
Cougar will be including this shade in a, in a very near future update. So keep in mind, the RV I'm recording today might not have it. It's going to be a rolling change though. So it's very possible we might have one in stock that already has the shade in the door. And if it doesn't and you want it, it's, it's such an easy add-in. But I love that Cougar's listening. Now, speaking of listening, yeah, let's segue that here. Where's my where's my switches? Okay, <laughs> uh, I should really I should really rehearse some of this. What are you looking at? Anyway, you've got just a normal light switch, which is cool. But if you listen, the ceiling vent fan up there. When this floor plan first came into existence, the only way to activate that was to actually sync your phone to the uh, in command system and then use your phone's Bluetooth function to turn the fan on up there. And if you lost your connection, if you forgot your phone or anything like that, there was no way to do it. So only one person in the household could even control that thing. Again, they're listening. They fixed it. They just put a switch on the wall the way it really should be. <laughs> but I realize I'm running my mouth and I didn't actually show you the bathroom. I'm telling you, I'm telling you folks, it's a, uh, it takes special person to be that kind of stupid on such a regular basis. By the way, once again, this is a rear room, a rear second bedroom that could work for more than just kids. There's some good adult size space around a porcelain stool and frankly, I think pretty decent counter space there as well. But speaking of that in-command system, again, there's just switches on the walls for stuff. So if you don't wanna have to grab your phone and if you don't wanna get up from the theater seat or from the rear room and walk all the way up to the front door just to turn on the lights, you don't have to. Oh, and remember how I said there's an accent light above the TV? Well, I finally remember to turn it on. So coming out of the rear room, moving forward, I wanna draw your attention to that big old black box on the right side of the screen there. That is the new uh, replacement for their uh, previous option for a residential 110 refrigerator. That is a 16 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Now there's still a four door gas electric refrigerator swaption as it were. Um, so, you know, if you are looking to do some off grid kind of function, that might be something that some people kind of uh, prefer to have. But basically you can really kind of build these ones a couple different ways. And since that refrigerator is buried in the slide out, as most Big Cat Cougar refrigerators are, um, it means that in a hot climate, it'll be uh, far easier for it to kind of keep up, you know, with the uh, smoldering temperatures. Now, I want to direct your attention all the way up top here. If you look, the air conditioner thing looks a little bit different. That's basically because it has a, uh, a residential filter that you can exchange on that, which I think is cool. And take a look at the, um, you know, the AC vents themselves. You see how they look like a little tornado swirly thing like you see when you, you know, you pull the plug on a bathtub? Well, um, that's kind of what it's going to do. It's going to vortex more air out of those vents and get them down into your RV where you actually want the air which is one of several things Cougar's doing to give this thing one fantastic hot climate camping package. Um, the, uh, when you look at like just the kitchen slide on this one, you're saying, oh man, the kitchen storage is a little bit limited. That's because this forward wall shared here with the bathroom, that is the bulk of our kitchen storage right there. Um, it does not have a center divider um, in that uh, center <coughs> divider. <coughs> Failed that one, you get the idea. You know what I'm saying. So, uh, you know, you can wedge some really big stuff in there, or you could put little partitions in it if need be. Now, that's not a convection microwave oven. It is size, though, uh, where if you wanted to do that, you could. Now, take note. You see, anywhere in this RV, you see those yellow stickers? That means that's an RV that is prepped in case you added an inverter to this RV, um, you know, for some uh, potential off-grid, say, like, coffee maker capacity or something like that. Again, you can kind of build these for in the parks, out of the parks, what works for you pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry, um, a larger 22 inch oven over there, by the way. And I want to give a quick shout out to, uh, one of our, uh, regular viewers, Miss Antifan. She came up with something I think is hilarious. She says, lumber core. That sounds like some new genre of heavy metal made by lumberjacks that no one's ever heard of before. And frankly, I am here for it. I love that is so weird. And it's exactly my kind of weird. Now, remember I said that TV can pivot around. For some reason, if you want to watch TV in the pantry, uh, you could. I don't know why you'd ever need to do that, but theoretically you could. 
It is a double swing out TV though, double swing arm. So if you want to pivot the other way, <laughs> well, you could certainly do that too. Now it's not super obvious, but the island is a little bit asymmetrical. There's a bigger chunk of counter space over here, which allows us, like so far you haven't really seen drawers in here. Well, you've got drawers of the floors over there. So plenty of room and they're nice big wide drawers. Uh, good for not just silverware, but you know, what if you got like big spatulas and stuff? My grandmother always said she had this big giant ladle that like she got from her mom and she would use that in case the kids ever needed a whooping. Turns out grandma never had a ladle. She just knew that uh, sometimes intimidation is the best way to prevent violence. <laughs> Now, when we get upstairs here, I'm going to circle way back to the very beginning of this video when I said this is an unconventional model uh, that, that provides some unconventional benefits. I almost screwed it up again. Oh, my Lord. Well, the upper deck is one of those areas that is very unconventional for what I'm going to call a big cat cougar. The upper deck of this actually more resembles the smaller Cougar, quote, half-ton series, even though most of those are, I don't feel, half-ton towable. That's the name of the product. Anyway, um, in that it has a, a more condensed upper deck. And a lot of people are going to look at this and say, where's the washer-dryer prep? Where is the east-west bed slide? And it, obviously, it doesn't have those things. It has great leg room. It has good headroom. The bed, uh, bathroom has good storage here. But this is not a model with a bed slide. Um, and someone's going to say, well, why not? Why couldn't they just put that in? They could. Understand, though, to do that adds about 22 inches to the RV, thousands of dollars potentially, and a lot of extra weight. Um, those were all things that they were trying to avoid on this one. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the goal of this, since it's already large, was to try to keep it in check a little bit. However, if that is what you're looking for in east-west bed slide and washer-dryer hookups, I have a solution for you. Check the links in our video description. First of all, you'll be able to check uh, for pricing and availability on this model at any given point and get to see, you know, current and accurate pricing. Uh, the other thing is you'll get to see some similar models there, Case uh, specifically the um, Arctic Wolf 3770. Very similar rear private second bedroom with a loft, very similar living room, but it does have an east-west bed slide and washer-dryer hookup. Now, real quick note over here, something that kind of throws people. Sometimes you look at an RV and there might be no, uh, you know, roller for the butt napkins. There might not be a, uh, a, a towel bar or some drunken octopus hooks. Some manufacturers will ship that stuff loose because no matter where they put it, they're told you put it in the wrong spot. So they let you and me kind of figure it out. Um, now up here in the bedroom, if you look inside these cabinets, you might notice the, the, like what we normally call the side wardrobe towers are not hanging closets. They're a little too short for that. So they are just kind of open dresser space. However, it's, it's not necessarily obvious because you do have that door right there, but that is a, like a full upper deck storage slide. It goes from the bedroom and it is hanging storage. And if you notice, it actually does pass all the way through. So you do have a significant amount of hanging storage in this. It's just a little bit different, a little bit unconventional. Some more dresser drawer space down below. I like how they did uh, run that storage slide down. A lot of manufacturers will stop where those drawers would start. And I mean, it's, it's okay, but I, I prefer storage galorage uh, anytime I can get it myself. And that is exactly what they brought to the table here with this big underbelly, uh, underbelly, I'm sorry, under bed. There we go. Storage. I guess if you're laying um, face down on your belly, then it is underbelly storage. So I suppose it's all uh, relevant a little bit. Now, I left the mattress kind of, or the, the bedspread pulled off the side a little bit to take a look at this mattress. It's not the traditional blue backbreaker wafer of death that you find in most RVs. Um, is it a sleep number? No. Is it terrible? I don't think so. I think it's actually pretty decent. And the bed arrangement on this is actually one of those more unconventional and potentially perfect options for some folks. Because one of the major things here is that is not a shore bed. That is a 60 by 80 true queen. So normal sheets fit it. Uh, a replacement mattress is very easy to source if that's something that you would prefer. One of the things though, this bedroom is a true queen bed. 
And that's all she's gonna be, unless you do some kind of aftermarket modifications. They do not offer a north-south king bed in these. Um, that's something that not a lot of brands do. Eagle HT from Jayco is one of the very few, but they don't make a floor plan exactly like this. Um, there's benefits to it, though. Some people dislike a king bed because it gets tight to walk around the bed. Some people like a king bed because there's more room to walk or uh, more room to lay in it. So, I mean, there's benefits either way. But this is a, uh, a design that is kind of time tested that gives us more room to walk around is extremely CPAP friendly, if that is your need. And notice, once again, both of the uh, headboard household outlets are wired to that inverter in case you need to make a travel stop. And this design really lends itself to that front window uh, or windshield, technically. And it does have that blackout roller shade there to block the sun out, keep the heat out, or block the nosy neighbors. Uh, you know, it, it, even if you're not um, aggressively folding laundry, I don't want somebody just staring at me when I'm sleeping, mouth breathing. <sighs> That's weird. I mean, right? Um, one other major note in here. You've seen the, uh, the second air conditioner on this. That is an option. Uh, by default, this has a single 15,000 BTU air in the living room. A big unit like this, it really feels appropriate to me to add a second air. But if you're a serious boondocking enthusiast, you may choose not to do that and instead uh, maybe install like a ceiling vent fan there to really maximize your 12 volt airflow. Um, I think the vast majority of potential buyers of this are going to want that second air. Am I, am I wrong? And with the slides closed in road mode, I know that at a glance, it looks like it sucks. It looks like you lose out on the kitchen and all kinds of stuff. But hang with me here. This RV actually can have like 80% function if you're willing and able to do one thing. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Starting back upstairs with the slide closed, uh, the wardrobe slide, because it's not a bed slide. Since the bed doesn't move since it's fixed, the bed always remains available and functional. And that is something that not every RV can necessarily say. Now remember that slide does pass through into the bathroom. So that extra privacy door, which is actually mounted on the slide itself, you have to make sure that's open before you close the slide. The cool thing is there's a little magnet hold back uh, on that door so that it, it really ain't gonna go anywhere. Now, we've established that we have bedroom and bathroom access. We are nap and crap accessible. Remember, you have that um, half bath door to the rear second bedroom. So you can always get to that bathroom and bedroom as well. The main contention point on this one is going to be downstairs. Now you've got a big landing when you first walk in, but it doesn't really do you any good when the kitchen is totally blocked off. Well, consider this. In order to even get into the RV, you gotta put the steps down, right? Well, if you can put the steps down, then there is room to open that shallow kitchen slide. And then if you can do that, suddenly we have access to all of the sleeping spaces, all of the bathroom spaces, the primary kitchen facilities. Uh, we can make a snacktastic little travel stop. You could make an overnight stay over and not have to open a single thing over on the driver's side of the RV. Now, that doesn't work for some people. I'm not saying that that qualifies for Cracker Barrel access. I'm saying that it is a potentially viable option for some people, and I've actually seen some owners come in and say, man, we've been doing the one slide access method at Travel Stops for years. It works great. Um, I, I really don't see how it's a problem, but that's some people's opinion. That's just an idea that I had. That doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily work for everybody. I just want to present that information and give you a little deeper insight into this stuff. And if you appreciate that, if you're new with us, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now we're kind of wedged over here in the corner of the property today by our giant pine tree. This is uh, something through the history of this store has actually been quite a bit of a, uh, a point of pride. As far as we know, this is the largest naturally growing Christmas decorated blue spruce in the world. Um, thing is like over 65 foot tall or something crazy like that. We, uh, we actually spend our money to light that thing up every year. That's something in case you were curious, uh, we did when this location was Halet RV. Uh, my father being Mr. Halet was a, uh, you know, the, the real force behind that. And that is something that the Bish's RV group has committed to continuing in the future years. I think it's very cool how Bish's really respects and maintains 
the um you know the, the history of each of their stores like that like this might not be halots anymore but it still has that halot heart you know now up front here you see that beautiful front automotive windshield uh because again that is a windshield not just a window but we've also i mean this thing maximum weight of this with cargo and base rv weight is up to fourteen thousand pounds um, I, I think it's got like a 2,700 pound cargo capacity, which is not bad. I see a lot of very low CCC out there lately here, which is concerning. Um, you don't have that here. You've also got that shock dampening pin box and road armor suspension package going along with it. I'm trying to do a better job at your request of showcasing the front compartment on these that I had missed in years past. See, that's where our spare tire is located. There's also, it doesn't come with a factory battery. Most RVs do not, but it does have a big double battery box that they basically borrowed from Montana. Um, so that, you know, it's uh, easy to really keep this thing powered up for a while. Um, the uh, box up there at that red switch, it's basically our battery disconnect, but it's called the Giggy Box. And what that is doing for us is it's basically preventing all parasitic load off those batteries when it's disconnected. So many RVs, when you flip the disconnect, they're not actually disconnected. This one is. Now, keep in mind, any battery, even lithium, even AGM to a small degree, when they are in storage mode, they do um, slowly bleed some power. So keep that in mind. They have a passive discharge rate, even if they're totally disconnected. Now, down here, you can't see all of the good work they're doing. And I want to detail this a little bit more than I often do. Because usually I get down here and go, oh look, it's an enclosed heated belly, blah, blah, blah. But Cougar's doing a lot more than that. Is that how I usually sound? <laughs> Apparently in my head, I sound like Bobcat Goldthwait from the Police Academy movies. Like, <laughs> anyway, what I'm getting at is Cougar does some serious weather work down here, but you can't see any of it. So unfortunately I have to do hand puppets. And if you don't care for this, remember I am chapter, chapter marking my videos now, you can probably skip ahead a little bit. So yes, it begins with an enclosed underbelly. Great. It is forced air heated. Awesome. They are using thermostatic 12 volt tank heaters on every single holding tank. And consider a model like this with a ton of holding tanks. Uh, that's a big deal. Now, Thermostatic means set it and forget it. They only kick on when it's like 40 degrees in that belly cavity. So, um, you know, if it's 70 outside, you flip your tank heater switch, you're not gonna like melt a hole in your tanks, which is one of the nice things on those. Um, additionally, they are running a radiant thermal barrier through the roof, down the nose, under the belly. That's something that they've been doing for years now, which is excellent. That really helps with efficiency. I am not one of these people that says the foil is an R38. I don't believe that. It's proven that it's not. And this equivalence thing, there's no real like equivalent, there's no like test for this. So I don't get into that. Cougars are tested and proven hot cold camp rated. That's what's important. But they go a little bit further than that because something else they do is they don't just have a heat dump into the underbelly. They actually have a heat run in the underbelly and then shooting off of that is like a, a forced air heat duct dumping directly onto each individual holding tank. Plus where that heat run is in the underbelly, they basically run their water lines directly on it. So they are in effect directly heated whenever the furnace is running. Plus you've got the radiant barrier package, plus it's enclosed, plus the general forced air heating, uh, plus the tank heaters. There's a reason these things have been able to survive um, like the polar vortex winters we had here in the Midwest the last two or three years beyond what Cougar or Keystone even tested them for. They've passed with flying colors. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that was. Anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about solar. First of all, she is prepped and ready for a, uh, a little portable panel like you see right there. But we've got a factory standard solar package. Now it might vary from Cougar to Cougar. It depends a little bit. Over here is our charge controller. You may notice a little Bluetooth icon. You can actually monitor the status of like your, uh, you know, your RV's battery, including given your current usage, how long you're gonna go before you run out of juice right off your phone. Now still on that solar topic or inverter, and I guess not solar, they're separate, but kind of related. Remember, anywhere you see those yellow stickers through the RV, that was an, uh, an outlet that is prepped for an inverter with this being the basic 200 solar package, there's no factory inverter. It's easy to add one. The 400 and 600 solar packages, those do have a factory inverter. Now this is the brain center of our in command system where we can see a very uncommon quality in the RV industry, in towables specifically, fully color coded wiring. 
There's very few manufacturers actually doing that. One of the other really kind of cool features on this is let's say you don't want to go inside or you left your phone so you can't open your awning. You can actually change to like motor one, two, three, four, five. Like So basically you've got multiple settings here, motors for your slides and then your awnings. You can uh, open and close your awnings right out here from ground level without having to track dirt inside. Um, I never remember which M12345 does what, so my recommendation is put a little cheat sheet above that after you check it sometime. Now, right here, this to me is really smart. And they almost did like a toy hauler thing by splitting two decent awnings instead of wasting one awning under, or well, over the uh, kitchen slide, as it were. Now, there can be some benefits to putting uh, an awning over a kitchen slide. I personally really prefer what they did here. Now we are right next to the old giant tree here, obviously, so I can't get you a sweet broadside look like I'd normally prefer to. Um, I do wanna show you though that behind the half bath door, there is a hot cold utility shower. Now you notice there's no faucet or whatever sprayer on it. That was uh, in a plastic bag in the front pass-through compartment. If you back the footage up a little bit, you'll see like a, a black sprayer coily hose thing, technical term. Uh, down in there. That's where that's located. Now, I didn't have a good angle on it before, and weirdly, all the way down here at ground level, it's easier for me to get to show you that rain blocker vent fan um, uh, that just, you know, gives you that good anytime airflow. Uh, I think very important given the topic of activity that <clears throat> tends to take place in this room. Now, a uh, neat little thing over here. This is so handy if oh, you got little kids, and potentially in this floor plan you do. Little kids will grab the door right here and pull it shut, and a lot of times they'll pull that panel right out of there, and you can put it back in, but it, it just gets wonky. There is a handle right here for them to pull on, but that is also the screen door latch, which is kind of cool. Plus, it's anti-slam. It doesn't really want to slam unless you really get friendly with it. Now, um, over here, under that big closet space that we saw is a little kind of mini camp kitchen. I like that it's over here, uh, you know, keeping the, uh, you know, activity inside the RV down to a minimum, keeping some of that cooking heat. If you don't like this cooker, if you don't like, if you don't like any of this, this, just take this out. It's basically a drawer. Just remove the fridge. Now you have storage. So you can do whatever you want there. And God bless America. Speaking of storage, I left my keys inside. And this one has the junk in the trunk storage system that is locked. I'll be right back. Like I said, junk in the trunk storage system. That's nerdism number 37 if you're keeping track. Um, under that bed in the back, it's basically wide open. And this right here, not only is this awesome storage, notice how it's gas strutted up front if you want to get into that from the inside you can you could partition it off inside versus outside if you wanted to the only thing you got to watch for there's a little box over here in the corner with an electrical or water something or other in it um so if you did want to convert that into a rear office and rip that bed out there's just a tiny little corner that's frankly not going to be in your way that you got to watch out for this has a uh, 300 pound accessory hitch on the back here's a really funny thing on those physically it's the exact same hitch as a 3,000 pound towing hitch. This RV simply does not have the four-way wiring harness, nor does it have the safety chain hooks. So basically they say this isn't really intended for towing stuff, but physically it's the exact same thing. Now, like we kind of talked about, just the way this floor plan lays out, it is very shy on campsite windows. So that may also determine whether this is or isn't the right one for you. I just want to point out things for you to consider to make sure you're spending your money the right way. And up top here, you know, I've seen a lot of RV roofing. A lot of it is pretty much the same. There's a couple key things they've done a little bit differently here. One of which you can see all the way down at the end of the RV. That is their solar package. Every single Keystone has at least that 200 watt panel up there. Cougars can also be ordered with a 400 and 600 packages, uh, which have big and bigger inverters that go with them. The 600 package actually from the factory capable of running one of the air conditioners off battery power, albeit for a significantly limited time. So keep that in mind. Um, the thing is though, Cougars are like, you hear, are, is it four seasons? What is the weather rating, blah, blah, blah. Um, cougars are one of the most rigorously tested out there from zero to 110 degrees. I think people worry 
more about cold camp capacities than they should when most of the time it's the hot camp capability that really determines if you're going to use the thing in the summertime you know now everyone's usage can vary but i think that's more true than not you know maybe i'm wrong um what they're doing here with their weather package radiant barrier through the roof attic vents in the roof to let it breathe out the white ac shrouds to make the ac work at maximum effectiveness is absolutely awesome and gets the job done hot climate cold climate doesn't matter Cougar gets it done. Now back down on the ground, a couple quick things. Let's talk about our stinky slinky deployment station over here. Uh, we've got a sewer hose caddy built right into this thing, so you don't have to mix that with all your other stuff. However, if you look, I'm in reverse view on a camera, right there. You've got yourself the rear half bath uh, gray and black outlet. Because if you read the holding tank capacity in this one, you're like, holy crap, this has some massive holding tanks. It actually has like, double the black and gray of most big cougars because you have uh you know the extra bathroom the extra uh well you know kitchen second bathroom etc so there's more need for more tanks there is however a second sewer outlet here in front of that slide now thankfully none of these are located under the slide where like you gotta get on your hands and knees and crawl through god knows what has dribbled on that ground before you you don't gotta do any of that nonsense um but you do either have to get a y connector and run that thing or you're going to have to unhook rehook which isn't ideal but it just kind of is par for the course for a bigger model like this so let me know where they nailed it let me know where they failed it highs and lows everything in between just like i've done with you leave me some comments chime in on this stuff guys and like i said if there's any owners out there who have one of these because i know this is a popular model please if you could leave any feedback good bad ugly or otherwise i want real feedback for real potential other folks out there making a difference you know and uh i i don't know if you're you watch i don't censor my comments sometimes people say man i bought one of these and it was a big mistake that makes me wince when i see that but i do leave it up there i don't peel stuff out of the comment section unless someone's just using terrible foul language uh, i'll leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability at any time um, popular model, I wouldn't be surprised if we're sold out. So if there's nothing listed on our site, I do have to ask you to call our team because pricing changes constantly. It's the only way I can give you accurate figures over time since these videos last a long, long while. And sure of that, everybody, if you appreciate how I show you the good with the bad, like the dual sewer hookups and everything else, hit that subscribe button, like our video. We'll catch you next time. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.